Oh, what's up? This is Eddie. I'm here with my man, Jake. We are at Ready Robotics in their beautiful facility. We got arms going all over the place. There's some cool things happening. But Jake, what are we going to be doing? Let's, let's get a little tour and see what's going on today, man. Absolutely. So as uh, you can see, we've got the Ready Robotics R&D space. Here we've got our artificial intelligence lab. So this is okay. our AI lab um, where we've got uh, a fleet of robots that are um, learning how to make manufacturing better. So uh, as you can see down here, we've got uh, the robots are running a variety of different, uh, uh, different programs. Um, wow. Really, what we're trying to do is to, uh, to, to make it easier for people to, to leverage robots and AI to make their manufacturing better. Um, so, for example, we take a program that somebody's written and, uh, um, you know, we want the robots to be able to run the program and, and, and for them to be able to, to use artificial intelligence to make that program more efficient, to optimize it. So, for example, you know, I'm going to pick a part, I'm going to put it in the, my, my lathe, uh, my machine tool. Okay. Um, is there a way that I can optimize the motion? You know, can I improve my cycle time? Can I um, save wear and tear on the arm? And we're using artificial intelligence and machine learning uh, to be able to let the robots learn how to do that. Okay, so these are all the same arms, correct? Just performing multiple functions. That's correct. Wow, okay. Okay, wow, this is pretty interesting, man. Very interesting. We've got six arms lined up here. So what are some of the key things that if you're looking from an outsider perspective like myself, what am I looking for? What are some of the impressive functions that we're seeing used here? Well, um... <laughs> I'm not going to lie to you, a lot of it's going on behind the scenes, right? Right, right, right. So, so what, you'd, what you'd see is um, you'd see a robot running just like it would in a, in a manufacturing facility. Okay. Um, what's going on kind of uh, under the hood is that our machine learning algorithms are processing the motions as the robot's moving and trying to understand, um, is there a way that I can do this process better? Right. right. How do I make it more efficient? How do I improve it? Um, and then apply those improvements so that I'm getting more out of my system. Mm -hmm. No, I see uh, this one now. We got we got Sparky down here. Do they all have names? Or is that just a special one there? <laughs> he, he's special. Okay, very, special. very good, very good. Right on. Well, nice to see Spark in all these lineups here. Wow, very cool. Absolutely. Very cool. Now, is there anything else that we're missing with this specific section, or anything else we need to know about? Well, here, and we'll we'll come around here. Very we've cool. got the Universal Robots uh, collaborative robots line. We've also got some of the Omron Techman robots. Um, and collaborative robots are, you know, a relatively new technology that allows us to be able to be inside the workspace while the robot's running. Like we don't need cages up around these systems. I can still be around them while they're running. Um, and what that does is that allows us to, to automate a whole new class of operations and tasks uh, that we weren't able to do before. Um, so here at Ready, we, we test and work with the you know, safe collaborative robots as well as the you know, less safe uh, caged robots, right? Okay. Um, so back here in our uh, robot alley, we've got uh, um, a large variety of, of other types of robots, your traditional industrial robots. We've got your KUKA robots, your ABB robots, uh, a couple of the Yaskawa Motoman robots running here, um, and some Fennec robots that we'll look at in a minute. Oh, wow. And really, what we're, what we're trying to do is, because of the software that we use, Forge OS, which we can come look at over here, uh, the software is designed to be cross-platform. Right? That means that I can start programming on a KUKA robot in Forge, and then I can stand up, come over here, and sit in front of my Escala robot, and I'm going to see exactly the same software. Oh, wow, okay. The same interface, the same building blocks, exactly the same programming environment is going to control any different robot. From my, you know, nice, easy to use UR robots, or my Omron robots, to my Yaskawa Motoman robots, it's going to be exactly the same programming experience. And so because we're building a software that is so cross-platform and, and functional, um, it's important that we're testing on a lot of different hardware platforms, mm -hmm. different manufacturers, different sizes, uh, collaborative and, and industrial robots to make sure that users are going to get the best performance out of their hardware and the best experience out of the programming. Very interesting. With such a diversity and knowing that there are just a handful, I'm sure you could probably think of just 10 brands right now making robotic arms, but having 
one language that they can all speak. That sounds pretty streamlined and Absolutely. automated. That, that, this, that's really impressive. Absolutely. Really impressive. Well, it's, it's really powerful, especially when you start thinking about robots like like our KR210 over here. Yeah, what is this monster <laughs> over here? This is awesome. So this is the type of robot you'll see in an in a, in auto uh, manufacturing facility, right? Okay. Um, this is a, it's a huge robot. It's got 210 kilogram payload, you know, almost 500 pounds of lift capacity. Uh, as you can see, it's taking a beating, right? This yeah. is a, This is a, a, a well-worn robot that, uh, that we picked up for not a lot of money. Um, and we got it here, program it with Forge with, uh, all, you know, different motions so that we're testing how's the robot moving, how repeatable is the robot, so that we're getting the performance you expect out of the robot. But because we're using Forge, we're able to pick up robots that may be, you know, gathering dust in the corner mm -hmm. and give them a new life, right? Put them back into production and do it very quickly. Wow. Wow. Very nice. And the accuracy of this big machine just moving around and then it barely touches that point. <laughs> Exactly. That's, that's impressive. And the, that's, the control is impressive. It's, it's the great thing about it is, you know, for whatever application you want to use, um, just pick your robot, use Forge with it, and, and I mean, it's going to be easy to program. It's that doesn't matter easy. what robot. It's that easy. Heard it here first. That's, no, that's right. awesome. This is truly impressive, man. Truly impressive. Thank you. I like this. I like this. So what else do we have going yeah, on so, here? So here we've got robots that are running through a lot of motion tests. You know, we're mm -hmm. testing the robot. But, you know, real world it's not just the robot that's going to be doing manufacturing tasks right mm -hmm. so we'll come around here and we'll look at some of the real world experiments that we're running right oh, we okay. want to make sure that we're testing our software in in as real an environment as possible again so that users are going to get the best experience mm -hmm. so we've got some fanic robots set up in front of active machine tools right <clears throat> so we've got our haas mill we've got our cnc lathe um, these are the kind of things that you know that customers uh, and people want to automate, right? Mm -hmm. I don't want to be standing in front of my machine tool feeding metal all day, every day, right? Precisely. A robot's gonna, gonna do that well. Um, so what we're doing is we're simulating an, in, an integrated automation work cell, um, all being pulled together through Forge OS, through our software. Um, wow. And we'll come over to Jessica and she can talk to us a little bit about, uh, about what's going on in detail. All right, all right. Hey, well, this Hello, is awesome. Jake. What's going on? Hello. So you get to sit around and play with robots all day. Is that, is that what's going on here? Yes, that's correct. Yes, I'm yes. all about it. That's wonderful. So, uh, so what's going on? What do we need to know here? Yes. Yeah, please. So automation is about much more than just the robot itself. So we need to consider how well the robot interacts with machinery in the real world, whether we have a fancy new Haas mill like we see on the right or an older CNC lathe like we see on the left. And although we love it when customers give us feedback about how well Forge OS works for them in their production environments, we need to test things out as much as we can here first before we send anything out. So on our right, we can see an older Fanuc M20 tending a newer mill. And on that system, we can actually use Forge OS to control digital I.O. to do things like open and close the machine doors and open and close the pneumatic vices inside. And on our left, we can see a newer Fanuc M710 robot tending an older lathe. And on that system, we can use Forge OS to control devices like button pressers and pedal pressers. And we cover all that in detail in our Ready Academy courses, as well as other, other documentation. You know, and one of the things we found is that, um, you know, you go into any shop and you're going to find newer machines, you're going to find older machines. Uh, sometimes those older machines are a little harder to automate because they, they weren't built for it. Um, and one of the things we've been able to do with, with Forge uh, and, some of the, uh, and some of the products that we provide is to be able to make it super easy to, to roll up to one of these older machine tools. Mm -hmm. um, as just mentioned, you know, plug in a button presser or a pedal presser and, and automate it in a couple of minutes. Very streamlined. So I'm curious, obviously being able to play with robots all day, what's your favorite part about what's going on right now? Uh, my favorite part is just how you could use Forge OS on any type of machinery. Um, so it's cool to be able to see the dichotomy of how you have a new mill uh, working with Forge OS, as well as like an older lathe also working with Forge OS. So it's very compatible across all different types of robots and different types of machinery as well. Awesome. Awesome. You know, that's seriously great. Very impressive stuff. I love it. All the movement, control, the automation. It's, it's, it's very, very cool. 
Very, very cool stuff. So what else do we need to know anything about this specific station and what's going on here? No. So we've actually got another one that I want to show you over here. Thank you. Well, no, yeah, Take thank that. you so much. And, uh, you know, uh, another type of application, again, one that we see a, a lot in the field, um, an integrated work cell for palletizing. Uh, so we'll have Brad uh, show you how that's working. And off Brad. All right, what's going on, man? Everybody has cool jobs. We can play with robots on it. That's seriously, <laughs> I'm so jealous. My job is boring, man. So, so what's going on? What are we seeing here? Very fun things, actually. Uh, so we're working with the palletizing application, uh, including a robot and several um, other automation devices, all powered by Forge OS. So here at Ready, we really like to work with uh, real-world work cells. Um, and we try to work with as realistic an application as possible so that we can test our software for uh, communicating with all kinds of peripheral devices. Uh, the idea is uh, we want somebody fluent in Forge OS not only to control a robot, but also to control all uh, components of automation so that they can operate <clears throat> very seamlessly an entire work cell, much like this palletizing application, mm -hmm. which includes a robot, a seventh axis uh, bench and lift, conveyor belt, and all kinds of sensors as well. Oh, very nice, very nice. So, so much real life application here to really put these robotic arms like to the test. And, and I love all these different setups and getting that realistic perspective. So very cool, very Absolutely. cool, I like it. That's awesome. Well, you know, we found that um, when, when you're automating, uh, the robot really is just one piece of the puzzle, you mm -hmm. know? Um, you, you need a lot more than that. You know, as Brad was talking about, you need uh, sometimes a seventh axis, you need end of arm tooling, you need mm -hmm. pneumatics. Um, digital I.O. There, there's really a lot of components that go into automating an application mm -hmm. beyond just the robot. And so one of the things that we're that we offer is is not just making it easy to program the robot, mm -hmm. but programming the entire work cell, you know, wow. bringing everything together into one interface, into one system so that so that people can program the entire application, right? which is really what they need. No, good stuff happening. I like it. I like it. it's very streamlined. So no, this is very cool. So what else do we have to look at? Yeah, so we'll come down here to our last stop on the tour. Absolutely. Um, and one of the things that we have uh, been focusing on, uh, especially lately, is, uh, is addressing you know, really one of the key uh, problems with getting automation further, faster out into the field. Right, That's right. education. Sure. Um, so here we've got our Ready Academy Studio. Oh, wow. Yeah. <laughs> okay, Logan, tell yeah. me about this. I like so what I'm Ready seeing Academy, here. Ready Academy is our online um, training and educational platform, right? Okay. So again, uh, one of the big things that, uh, that is, we see across the industry is, is you know, what's called the skills gap, right? Um, a lot of people um, don't have the, the education they need, they don't have the skills they need to automate. Um, people can't find uh, enough people to work jobs in manufacturing. Um, so there's this need to, to get people, to educate people um, in manufacturing and automation technologies. Mm -hmm. So we have created and launched recently an online platform called Ready Academy okay, that, nice. that allows people to, to sign up for free um, to start getting educated in programming robots, um, but not just robots, but really all of the aspects of automation that they would need, right? So as you can see some of the equipment that we're using, again, trying as, as really as much as we can to simulate real world uh, environments and examples. Right. You know, with um, uh, suction and pneumatics, with uh, realistic robot arms that you're going to use in manufacturing, mm -hmm. um, uh, tools, parts, presentations, fixtures, um, really everything that you need to, to automate. Um, so that people can go on, can sign on and get the education they need and get out into the field and, and automate and get things done. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, and that's, again, it's, it's anybody can, can get on, can start learning uh, right now for free at ready.academy. So what a, what a great walkthrough as well as a demonstration. You have the educational component. You've got multiple arms working at once. You've got real life scenarios happening as well for testing. There's just a lot of really cool things happening here. So for any of our viewers here that want to learn a little bit more about Ready Robotics, where do we go? Uh, ready-robotics.com is our website. Uh, you'll see a link to it in the description. Um, yeah, check it out. Uh, you know, check out the videos, the uh, documentation. There's a lot of great stuff there to uh, uh, help you uh, get to know our products and uh, and the great advantage you get.
There we go. Hey, well, make sure you check out everything we just referenced. And as well, before we leave, make sure you hit that like button, hit that subscribe button, and hit that bell to turn on the notifications so we can keep you in the loop with all the amazing content that we're going to be releasing. So thank all of you viewers. Thank you, Jake, for being our expert today. It was a wonderful demonstration. Hey, you all stay awesome, stay flexing, and we'll see you next time.